No. No. Now, settle, simmer down. <laughs> Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to BTMP Reviews. If you new here or you just haven't been listening, I'm P. Okay? If you're new, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming over to my channel and viewing this video. Keep coming back. Go ahead and subscribe, okay? Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to comment. Alright, so... A while ago, I was blessed to be a guest on Santi TV's live. If you're not already subscribed to Santi's channel, I'm going to tag her in this video. So be sure to go over there, subscribe, watch her videos. She's a wonderful person, has great content. She's always using her platform to shine a light on others. So I love her. Plus, she's very helpful. So how could you, how could you not, like, support that? Go follow my girl, okay? Now, while on her live... She actually asked me a question that pertained to why I believe more women are not involved in the 2A community or why more African-American women aren't more involved in the 2A community. So it really made me think about the women I know and even myself and how I came to even become such a gun lover. Like, it's, it's kind of an a interesting story when I think about it. So I thought, why not interview these ladies? Get the, you know, information out there. Let them share their stories with you guys. Hopefully you guys come and watch it and enjoy it. So, without further ado, the first person coming to the stage is my sister. You here getting ready. She is so ready for her close-up. You feel me? My sister, T-Baby, let's go! That's what I do. I also sit on the board of a nonprofit called Invisible Book Bank Inc. Um, you guys might want to check that out. We do nonprofit work within the community in Chicago. Wonderful things. And you can find Limitless Grill and Invisible Book Bag on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok. You on TikTok too? That's the logo for Limitless Grill. Yeah, that's the logo. So it'll be a plain logo. So if you in the area, or if you just want to support the nonprofit, please don't hesitate to go check out those pages. There is a donate link for the Invisible Book Bag page. The kids will really appreciate it. All right. Well, let me tell you that I'm honored to have you as my first guest. Oh. This will be the first ever interview, you know, I'm going to be doing for the channel. And... I just want you to feel very comfortable. You know, you're just talking to me. I just happen to have a camera here, uh -huh. and we're going to talk to it. But, you know, it's just one other person, not the millions of people that are going to see this. Not the uh, yeah, the millions. You got to speak that, girl. The okay, you, the millions of people that are going to watch this. <laughs> okay, so your story is interesting to me. So um, I kind of want to start from the beginning. So... Can you tell me, early on, what were your thoughts on guns? Was it good? Was it bad? Um, I mean, yeah, as a kid, we had guns and basically, you know, toy guns and stuff like that. We played with them. So as a kid, it, I didn't look at it as negative or positive. It was a toy. But as I got a little older, you know, still as a kid, you know, I had a couple of experiences that, you know, gave me a negative, you know, vibe on guns. Okay, um, would you mind talking to us about 
what those negative experiences were? Um, one was our cousin. So he was shot and killed in a car, sitting in his car seat. So that was uh, my first experience. Cause you know, I remember going to that funeral and stuff as a kid and just looking at him in the casket. And he was a little older than me. So it was like, he was in middle school and it was across the street from my elementary school. So, you know, that was my cousin. Um, so just a negative experience. I had nothing with my mom, you. It was coming from the laundromat, so it was just negative. What was the experience like for you with the laundromat? Um, this girl found it funny, but you know, that was her kid brain, I guess. It's still um, funny today. But we were coming from the laundromat. It was me, my mother, and my sister. And we were walking down the street. We were on Madison, actually. Um, and yeah, West, West, uh, West, uh, but it was on Madison, so we walking down the street, coming from the laundromat, and um, but I guess they were shooting down the same street, like behind us, the way we were walking. A guy was running from somebody, shooting down the street at him, the same way we were walking. So my mom knocked us to the ground like immediately, but I decided, you know, that I wanted to look back to, you know, what's what, you know, what's going on? I see somebody running. I want. She knocked me down so quick, like it was like WWE, you know, okay, like, bruh. That's why it was funny. It wasn't funny for what was happening, but for me, that was overshadowed by Mama knocking you to the ground, and, or even your decision to look around. Like we, we grew up like. Hearing the gunshots on like New Year's Eve, right? Mm -hmm. And we would yeah. duck inside the house, right? Yeah, yeah. But now we're outside and she looking around. I thought it was hilarious, okay? I still think it's hilarious to this day. Don't know. I if look at it like my mom saved my life. Um, Absolutely. She's, she's special. Okay, that's all. Yeah. I'll say I'll leave it at that. Special. In a good way. In a good way. Okay, so. Those were the situations, those were the situations that gave you the negative perception of guns. Yeah. So, yeah. I left okay. with a scar in me, but you know, thank God. That you was know, all, right? Because, amen. Yeah, thank God that you're here. I don't know. I got things to do. Yes. Yeah. You're an amazing person. You're doing amazing things. Have you had any experiences with gun violence as an adult? Yeah, I was in a situation and it was a road rage type of situation where a guy shot into the car so I got hit, blood flying everywhere in the arm and um, that whole evening was just um, crazy, just the whole experience, just hearing them say GSW we in the hospital, just to have my mom being called, you know what I'm What's saying? What's GSW? Gunshot wound. Um, just hearing them call, you know, having to call my mom and say, you know, in the middle of the night, two in the morning, because we're coming from a party. Yeah, like, yeah. To call my mom and say, you know, I was shot or I'm in a hospital as a GSW or whatever. Like, I remember I'm in there praying with the nurse. I just took her hand. I just started praying because the whole experience was like, this is not happening to me. You know, like, I don't participate in road rage you know what i'm saying that part right there that was the crazy part you're not expecting that somebody's yelling in the next second they shoot you know what i'm saying so it was just um that whole experience was uh, crazy um i felt like um with that situation people were saying things like hey if i had a gun you know i would have did this or i would have responded yeah, like that uh, naturally, in the situation, there was no time for anybody to respond back. I was already hit, and it's already blood flying. What else is there to do but to get me to safety? I don't, I don't understand um, people's response when they say, "I would have did this. I would have shot back." That would have like created a back and forth. Like I would have been engaging in something at that point. I wanted to get away from something, you know, that situation. So when people, you know, when people say that I would have been this, I, it was no time. I, it was blood. My blood was exiting my body. It was time to find me some help, get away. Like, like this is danger, danger, danger. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, well, it's easy for someone that's not in the situation to say what they would do. You know, that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. Put them in the situation. Yeah. You know. Everybody have different experiences. Y'all that have experience with guns, you would know how to, you know, get it from A to Z, you know. Right. Let's go into my next question then. So clearly there are people that gave you the negative perception 
they weren't law-abiding citizens. You know what I mean? Right. So, given that you had these experiences with guns that were not owned by responsible gun owners, how do you feel about the Second Amendment? It's not the people who have the credentials to own a gun that's, you know, <laughs> giving me these experiences and giving so many other people these bad experiences. The ones that don't have the education on the gun, the ones that ain't got no aim, they they not even aiming, they just, they are the reckless. So, okay. um, yeah. I got a, I got a good one that I just thought of. How did you feel when I first got a gun and started getting into guns? Um, you, you just jumped in, so it was just like one minute, we weren't even talking about that next minute, that was the conversation, you, with your guns everywhere, it was just so comfortably laying around all of a sudden, and that was like, um, okay, it was something you had to get used to, it, it was just, no, it, that's, <laughs> you, I mean, I just started seeing guns more. Were you, were you, <laughs> against, were you against me owning a gun? I wasn't necessarily for it. I was just like, oh, okay. You know, it was just like, whatever. I mean, I didn't care for it for myself. I didn't have an interest in it. So, we went to Memphis in May. Uh -huh. And we all had a nice little range experience. We did. So, had you held, had you ever held a gun before? Yours. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Got you. Yeah, you had shot a gun. Just teaching me how to hold the gun and stuff, and safety and unsafety, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Necessary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now you're at the range. How did you feel when you were like standing there? It was your turn to shoot. Okay, so I had never shot a gun before. So first time, I was naturally a little nervous. I didn't know what to necessarily expect. But um, once we got into it, I mean, I was shooting all the guns. All of them. I want to shoot everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It so wasn't bad. Too. Would you say that you had fun? Yeah, I had a good time, actually. I had a great time. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Mainly because it was so many guns to choose from. It was shout a out to lot Cece. of guns. Cece had all of the guns. Yeah. yeah. She shot the Draco. I did. I did. The shotgun. Yeah. It was like, hold on, hold on. You can't be let loose like that. You can't be doing that. I was like, okay, okay, my dad. <laughs> Sorry. That's how she got the nickname T Baby. Is it? Is that what I came from? Nah, I don't know. It just came from Cece. So it's safe to say that she would go to the range again. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to going when we get down there to Tennessee. Did y'all find us a range? Oh, we still looking. Oh, okay. But yeah, we taking out we taking our hands. Now that you've had this experience, do you see gun ownership in your future? Oh yeah, I got my FOIA card. Um, I gotta take my class, facilities carry class. Um, and yeah, why not? I'm gonna get some training. Like everybody should get some training. At least y'all know how to aim. Like y'all just out here reckless. Get some. <sighs> yeah, I mean it is sad. It is sad the way that one these criminals are getting <clears throat> access to these guns. They got automatic weapons. We can't even get automatic weapons. And I'm obeying the law. Okay, that's something. I'm willing to show my ID. Go pay an extra fee to take a class to get a concealed carry license. I'm willing to, you feel me, go to the store, pay the store prices. I should be able to get an automatic weapon. I only want to use it for fun. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me, T-Baby. I appreciate you for being my first interviewee. Did you know I like being the first. I did my birthday the first. I do want that cricket and that edible printer just in case you want to get it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm she plays great gifts like all her life. Yeah. All my life. <laughs> as long as I could get a gift. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great cricket, edible printer. The Amazon Anybody want to donate a cricket to my sister? <clears throat> it's in the safe for later in the Amazon cart. Mm -hmm. Good to know. I'll tell my mama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
and you should tell. Okay. She'll be by Indeed, it is a nice song. Alright, T baby. Alright. P baby. Hope you got Okay. P baby. I'm I'm Priyonce. Yo. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Don't hesitate to give it's us a thumbs up. up. Don't forget to subscribe. I have more interviews lined up with ladies in my life. And I'm sure that you guys are going to enjoy it. Thanks of for course, because we're lovely. Until next time, be safe. Bye-bye. Baby, we are, baby. Indeed, we are.